Look, to me, there are three great advice givers for writers. Well, there are many great advice givers for writers, but there are three essential ones. And to me, those are Stephen King, Brandon Sanderson, and Ray Bradbury. Stephen King offers great information about the craft. Brandon Sanderson offers great information about practicalities of being a writer. And then you have Ray Bradbury, whose advice is probably the most idealistic, inspirational, optimistic, whimsical. I don't know. He was probably the first person who spoke sparked that fire of, oh my God, I want to be a writer. This is the most amazing thing in the universe. Watching his videos on YouTube was a big deal to me. A lot of writers who feel the same way about Ray Bradbury because he spoke with such passion about writing and believed truly that writing is a way to expel your demons, to feel, to disconnect and create something great. So here are the essential advice that I got from Bradbury that I would like to regurgitate to you and remind myself of these days because who doesn't need constant reminder reminders about these sorts of things? There are four points. Point number one, possibly his most difficult rule to follow, write every day. That can be hard to do sometimes, especially when you have life going on, and things get in the way, and you're busy editing videos and doing school and shit. The advice is sound because even if you aren't physically writing every day, being able to tap into that world, that creative world, and think about your writing and think about your stories is essential. And Bradbury could also just be kind of hyperbolic in his the way he expressed himself. I think literally it's good to write every day, but also to be constantly working towards a goal with writing. And, and to me, the consistency is the most important thing. You can't really improve and grow as a writer if you're not able to make any progress. You're not able to get the words down on page because for years you're just, you're just typing out all of the stuff that won't be good. The only way to learn is to just get through that phase, which everyone apparently, supposedly, that's what they tell me, has to get through. Point number two, don't think. Bradbury tells the story about how he would have a sign pasted over his typewriter that said, don't think. It was a reminder for him that when he sat down to write, turn off the thinking part of his brain. And that's kind of a bit antithetical to what writers like to think about themselves, that they're thinking, they're designing their story and constructing the plot. Look, I'm not saying, you know, structuring a plot is a bad thing or antithetical to writing. I'm just saying the feeling, the true feeling should always be there. Bradbury's point was when you sit down to write, you are opening up your heart. This is what I mean about Bradbury being emotional, idealistic, optimistic kind of fellow. He believes that writing is about opening your heart and soul. And that is very appealing to a lot of people, not at all times. And it's not always what I need to hear when I'm writing. Sometimes I just need to hear like, okay, what can I do to this chapter to get to the next chapter? What is wrong with my structures at act one, act two? You know, that sort of stuff is great and all. At the end of the day, you are writing to express yourself, to feel something you want readers to feel something, discover something about yourself. It's a beautiful process. And when you sit down in front of the keyboard and you're about to write, I did this with my own laptop because I like to have my camera covered up because I don't want the CIA watching me or anything. Uh, I usually just put a piece of tape there, but now I have a little sticker that says, don't think. I need that reminder. Unfortunately, I do my, I take my tests on my laptop. When I'm like taking an important test for class, I read the don't think thing. It, it psychs me out a little bit, but when I'm writing, it's, it's it's a nice little reminder. Point number three, write down your loves and hates. Writer's block. He said, write down a list of things that you love and the things that you hate. Then you could write so many stories about that. There is always a fuel. There are so many things to write about. For whatever reason, this piece of advice comes into my head way more often than I think, especially when I'm trying to generate story ideas. Just write a list of things you hate and things you love. And Bradbury example for him is when he wrote Fahrenheit 451, he hated book burners. So he wrote a book about about book burners. When you draw from your own passions, there's always a well to write from. Point number four, read what you love or move on. And I think this point applies just as much to writing. Write what you love or move on. And this is basically Bradbury's whole philosophy about writing is that you do things with love. It doesn't mean you only write when you have passion for it. No, build discipline so that you can pull that out when you write. Draw up that emotion, that raw emotion when you write. This advice 
is useful when you don't exactly know what to do with your writing or with your or with what you're reading. Writing is a mysterious process. For me, these these pieces of advice are useful. They may not be useful for everybody, but for me, it reminds me of why I love to write. It's not about getting to the next chapter or cleaning up act one. Like that is part of it, of course. The craft is part of it, but the reason, the motivation behind the writing is just as important, if not more so. I actually have something cool right here. I think I was like in eighth grade and this was at like my half price bookstore. And I saved up like money I got. It's a signed copy. And it's like one of my absolute prized possessions. I just wanted to share that, brag a little bit, show off. Oh my God, <laughs> almost dropped it. What does everyone think if you're a Ray Bradbury fan? How has his writing advice affected you? Let's bring in the, the Bradbury love here, okay? Yeah, thanks, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you have not yet. Bye bye